Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about sodium potassium pump. Transport of substances across the cell membrane is necessary to maintain all normal functioning of the cells. Transport across the cell membrane is divided into three main types. Active transport, passive transport and vesicular transport. Here, active transport it is a type of self transport that requires input of energy in the form of ATP. And according to the source of energy, this active transport is divided into two types. Primary active transport and secondary active transport. Primary active transport means they use the energy directly from the hydrolysis of ATP. Energy directly from the hydrolysis of ATP. Secondary active transport means energy utilized in the transport of one substance helps in the movement of other substance. In the secondary active transport, energy utilized in the transport of one substance, it helps in the movement of other substance. One of the common examples of active transport is sodium potassium pump. It is also known as sodium potassium ATPase. Sodium potassium ATPase. Its main function is to pump sodium out of the cell. Its main function is to pump sodium out of the cell in exchange of potassium into the cell against the concentration gradient against the concentration gradient that is the main function of this sodium potassium pump so let's see the mechanism the sodium potassium pump maintains the sodium potassium concentration difference across the cell membrane and the coming to the structure of this sodium potassium pump it has Two subunits, alpha and beta subunits. Alpha subunits binds ATP, then sodium and potassium. Beta subunit, it is necessary for the activity of the complex. Then coming to the mechanism. Here, sodium potassium pump has binding sites for 3 sodium and 2 potassium. It has binding sites for 3 sodium and 2 potassium. And this pump has a higher affinity for sodium ions. Higher affinity for sodium ions than potassium ions. The 3 sodium ions bind to the cytoplasmic in, at first 3 sodium ions bind to the cytoplasmic side of the protein. 3 sodium ions, it binds to the cytoplasmic side of the protein. Here, 1 phosphate is transferred from the hydrolysis of ATP to the protein. And here, ADP is released. Phosphate is bound to the protein, so ADP is released from this ATP. And this causes phosphorylation. And this phosphorylation causes conformational changes in the pump, sodium potassium pump. And this 3 sodium ions, these are released into the extracellular region. These 3 sodium ions are released into the extracellular region. So this is the phosphorylated form. This phosphorylated form of the pump has high affinity for potassium ions. So 2 potassium ions bind to the pump. This uh, binding of the two potassium ions to the pump, it induces dephosphorylation of the pump. That means phosphate is released. And it causes again conformational change. And it releases potassium ions into the cell. And this, this is unphosphorylated because uh, this uh, phosphate is released. So it is unphosphorylated form of the pump. This unphosphorylated form of the pump has again high affinity for sodium. And the process starts again. So this sodium pump, sodium potassium pump moves 3 sodium outside the cell in exchange of 2 potassium inside the cell. 
So sodium ion, this uh, sodium ions and potassium ion, these are positive charges. These are positive charges. Sodium, this sodium potassium pump, it pumps three sodium outside the cell and two potassium inside the cell. So, when the pump works, there is a net loss of one positively charged ion from the cell. So, it causes reduction of number of positively charged ions inside the cell. Because inside only two potassium ions, outside it is three potassium ions. So, there will be reduction of number of positively charged ions inside the cell. This leads to development of negative potential inside the inside the cell. This is called electrogenic activity of sodium potassium pump. Electrogenic activity of sodium potassium pump. That means when the uh, pump works, there is a net loss of one positively charged ion from the cell. So it causes the reduction of number of positively charged ions inside the cell. It leads to the development of negative potential inside the cell. This is called electrogenic activity of Sodium potassium pump. Coming to the importance of sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump, it keeps the intracellular concentration of sodium low. Intracellular sodium low compared to outside and intracellular potassium high. Then maintenance of a membrane potential in all cells. Membrane potential. That means this pump keeps inside the membrane negative. Inside it is negative. Outside of the membrane it is positive. Outside it is positive. So maintenance of a membrane potential in all cells. Then it regulates the cell volume. Regulates cell volume by controlling concentration of solutes. The next one is. The steep sodium gradient is used to provide energy for secondary active transport. Uh, secondary active transport means energy utilized in the transport of one substance. It helps in the movement of other substance. So here the sodium potassium pump, it uh, this in the sodium potassium pump there is steep sodium gradient. So this steep sodium gradient, it is used to provide energy for this secondary active transport. It is the importance or functions of sodium potassium pump. So this is today's topic. Thank you for watching.